Hi, this is Marlon from Marley Matt Media and welcome to this beat breakdown. In this beat breakdown today, we're going to be looking at a track from a UK artist called Notes. The point of this is to give you an insight as to what goes into making a track like this. And hopefully you can get some ideas and some tips in terms of how you can improve your own productions. I'm going to run through some of the elements inside this track to show you exactly what's going on. If you want to have a deeper dive, you can go ahead and download the project file where you can see everything that I've done and you can see all the the MIDI files, uh, MIDI notes, and so on and so forth. You can also save the custom sounds that I've used inside this track. And um, hopefully that will help you uh, in terms of when you're going to do other productions, you can use those exact same sounds as well. So now I'm gonna go ahead and play through the track. Okay, so the track starts off with a piano sound here, and um, you can look on the channel strip here if you want to see what um, plugin I'm using. I'm using all Logic plug plugins in this case. Um, I try to avoid using third-party plugins, and this is to um, just utilize what I've got available to me um, and to show you that you can actually use what you've got available to you. I haven't got exactly all the same sounds in this track, but um, I've, uh, where possible, I've actually replaced um, some of the elements of the original track with my um, own uh, sounds that I've come up with to, to um, blend well with the track. So I've got the piano, the lead piano sound here, which is playing that lead element. If you want to have a look at the actual MIDI, this is what the notes look like on there. Then we've got the kick, the kick and the clap. Um, this is this is being done through the drum machine and um, I've got them together because I've just played it back in the drum machine and I couldn't separate it out. So I've just um, done it together. Uh, the kick is just here and I've got the clap there. So I played that all through in one uh, MIDI take or in one take. Um, then we have the hi-hats, which is um, through the ultra beat, um, just one of the stock sounds in ultra beat where you've got the hi-hat banks and um, it's just literally playing a straightforward hi-hat beat. So that's as simple as that. And um, we've got another clap here being layered um, on top of the original clap, which just gives it a bit more uh, clarity. And the next thing I've got is an accent snare. I call it an accent snare because it just comes in um, ever so often. And that's actually panned over to my left. Uh, we've got some fast hi-hat rolls in here as well um, that just adds to the um, the elements in the in the track to keep it interesting. And um, these hi-hat rolls, uh, I'll just play them back so you can hear what they sound like. 
So that's like a triple or a quadruple type of roll. And um, as you can see, this is just one MIDI note that I've got here. Uh, so to achieve this, what I've done is I've placed an arpeggiator uh, on the track here with the, the hi-hats. So I've played one single note and I've arpeggiated it to um, play back the sounds um, in, in, in a rolling pattern. So you can look have a look at my settings here if you wanna um, screenshot that and see what I've done and use it um, for yourselves. You can go ahead and screenshot it right now. Uh, so that's what I've done pretty much for all the fast rolls. Um, uh, basically it's the same roll that's just duplicated all across, all across the track here. And um, that's pretty much that. And if we move on a bit further into the track where the bass line comes in. The bass line is one of the main drivers of this track. And um, you can see here at this bridge, I've got um, the sub bass there um, just coming in for the very, very first time. So there's, there are two different patterns being played here. There's one here for the bridge. You can look at my notes there. And then there's this one here, which is pretty much playing back um, the the main part of the track and um, that just gets repeated along there. Okay, so this is playing back um, just a steady note, but if you listen to the track, you will hear these are just um, standard notes. Um, there's nothing too fancy happening inside um, inside here for the notes themselves. But if you listen back to the actual track, you'll hear that there's a gliding action, a gliding act action happening inside the track, which um, is being uh, done to give it movement. Um, how I've achieved this is through the pitch bend wheel on my keyboard. So I actually played this back live. Uh, listen to what it sounds like so you can have an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so what you can hear there is the bass going up and down, um, even where it doesn't show that I've played a chord or a note rather that's actually up or down. And um, if you come into the clip view where you can actually see the MIDI notes here, I've highlighted that one there for the bass line. Um, I've got the pitch bend uh, parameters in here. If I toggle this uh, MIDI draw button on, you can actually see the patterns here from the um, MIDI that I've actually um, played in at first. And then I've gone in and um, adjusted these parameters. You can see these little points. These are um, pretty much keyframes that you can move around. If I click on that one here, I can drag it out. I can um, reposition it to the point where I want it to actually sound a certain way. So what I would have done is I started playing back uh, this first note here. Uh, so you can see this note stretches from here to here, but it moves up and down several times before it goes to, goes to the next note. So it would have started playing at the regular pitch here, and then it goes up at that point, sustains, come back down a little bit, sustains, come down, sustains, go up, and then up again. And then here's a little curve. This is um, actually on the second note, and um, this just smooths out the action so it doesn't abruptly go up and down, it just um, fades into the um, pitch that it needs to fade into, gives it a smoother action. And you can see this is being now stretched across several uh, couple of notes here where it's sustained. Um, so uh, you can do this if you haven't got a MIDI controller with a pitch bend wheel, you can pretty much draw this pattern in by just clicking, like I said, clicking uh, new points, you can double click to add points and then go in and edit these points by dragging them around. Yeah, you can do that uh, totally by drawing them in. It does take a little bit more time as far as, um, in my experience, I rather play back the sound and try and see what I'm going for uh, physically by just um, using the keyboard uh, to manipulate what I'm doing. It may not be accurate because I'm human, so that's where I go in and start fine tuning. Right, so here I've got um, some keys this is from the ES2. Uh, if you want to see what patch that is, it's the Ballad E Piano. I don't think I did any adjustments to that one, but the Glide Bass is a custom setting 
uh, from the ES2. If you want to have a quick look at that one as well, you can go ahead and screenshot that one and take down the settings. Pretty much um, all the other things I've got in here are some vocal chops. What I've done is I've gone into Apple Loops and I grabbed um, a vocal sample and just separated out of a portion of it and um, placed that inside the ES2 and basically stretched it across. If you go into the edit function here, you can see that I've just got one MIDI note. Yeah, here it is. It's the Carla, Carla Melody 29 um, file. So I've stretched this across all the entire length of the keyboard inside the EXS24. Uh, and um, that allows it to pitch up and down when you play different notes on the keyboard. So I then figured out which note kind of matches the key of the song. So I just listen and figure this out, um, what sounds good pretty much, and um, play some, some little vocal chops, I call them, at different intervals inside the song. I've got an audio chant, a chant sound as well. This is, this is also from Apple Loops, uh, the library there and I've just placed these strategically across the board. Um, I have this uh, sort of a, um, mallet sound, which sounds like, I'll just grab this across here, and play this section. There you go. So that sound is just being used to replace one of the synth sounds that they used in the original track. I don't have that sweet sound in synth. If anyone knows what synth that is they used in that track. Um, by the way, I haven't mentioned the name of this track, but I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out from notes. Um, if you know what synthesizer they used, leave a comment down um, inside the comments and let me know so I can try that out because that sound is sweet. Um, but I, I honestly don't know what plugin they used and so on. Uh, like I said, I wanted to stick with just using the stock sounds and coming out with something decent and hopefully this will inspire you to actually just use what you've got as well and to forget about always worrying about oh i need this third party plugin i need to get this plugin it's not about plugins it's about just like i said making do with what you've got and it pushes you to be more creative i find it might take you a little bit more time to achieve certain things but once you get there it'll be a, a bigger sense of achievement and you can always save those patches that you've created along the way and you learn how to sound design um you know without actually having to having to actually go through too much um complications you just literally tweak things see what they sound like and that's how i do it we all learn together and uh, my aim is to actually just put what i've learned out there so you can um you know learn from it as well so hopefully this is helpful to someone and um Hopefully you like this uh, remake that I've done of this track. If you want to see more videos like this, please uh, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button as it does help the channel out. Check the links in the description for any resources that you can go ahead and um, use to support this channel as well. Check the video description for any of those links. Thanks for watching and take care. This is Marlon. Until next time. Peace. Woo!